Hi guys, um, so we've arrived at our second location here in Uganda. Uh, we arrived last night at the village, we set up camp and this morning early we set out in some very very dense jungle, some of the densest uh, stuff that I've walked through. After about an hour one of the snake spots has spotted um, Arteris hispida, which is one of the target species here. Oh, oh wow. So here we have it. This is the hairy or rough-scaled bush viper. Now these are an amazing species of snake. They are super, super unique. They're an endemic species to Central Africa. Um, Arterias are only found in Africa as a species or families of, of viper. And the rough-scaled bush viper or hairy bush viper are found in isolated pockets in three countries, in Kenya, Uganda, as well as in the Congo. This is a venomous species of viper. Uh, here in Africa. They're very, very, very beautiful. The name of these vipers comes from the extremely keeled dorsal scales. Now it starts off very heavily keeled at the head and it tapers off towards the tail. Now these keeled scales gives it a very bristly or rough um, appearance or hairy appearance which gives it its name. Here on the trip we've actually called them little dragons because of their very unique look. They've got this very blunt snout and they look like little dragons. They're really, really beautiful species of snake. There's been very little studies conducted on these snakes due to their isolated pockets and uh, the extremity and intensity of the environments that they live in. It's very difficult to conduct research on such small species of snake, especially considering they're highly arboreal, living up in the canopy and in very dense, dense thickets and forests and jungles. Now, these are nocturnal snakes, so they will cruise around at night. During the day, they'll go up into uh, sunny areas on blooming flowers or fruit, sit there, bask for a couple of hours and once they've reached optimal temperature they will uh, reside down into the lower parts of the canopy, find a cool place and wait for night time to start hunting. The prey items of these species is very unknown. Usually for snakes for this size would feed on lizards and frogs and things like that but because it's so small as a neonate, as a baby, the snake catchers have told us that they feed on insects when they're young. The one guy mentioned that they will feed on mosquitoes, etc. So you can imagine what a cool sighting that would be of a baby one of these or a baby little hespida um, feeding on mosquitoes or small flying insects. It would be really cool to see them feed on these invertebrates. I'm sure as they grew up and got a bit older, they would prey on slightly larger items of invertebrates or maybe even certain vertebrates such as lizards or small frogs if the frogs were to be occurring in the area and extremely, extremely small mammalian prey, or even small birds, maybe a sunbird or something like that. It would maybe crawl into the nest and feed on those small babies. Now, the males and females have slight sexual dimorphism, not in terms of coloration, but in terms of size. The males are a lot more slender and long, reaching between 60 to 78 centimeters, whereas the females range between 58 to 68 centimeters. The females will be a little bit um, fatter and thicker, That'll be due to them having to um, carry babies. Their gestation period, like most um, viviparous snakes, is between six to seven months. The females will give birth anywhere between seven to 12 young at a time, and there will be little carbon copies of their mother. There is another very similar species looking like this from um, Cote d'Ivoire in the Thai National Park, which is called Arteris hirsuta. Uh, it has a very similar look, and hirsuta actually stands for in Latin means hairy. So you could be some confusion between hirsuta and the hairy bush vipers. So these are preferably called rough scaled or bristled bush vipers. Now due to the very little studies done on their venom, there's very little, very little known. They're thought to be primarily neurotoxic snakes with fasculins and other types of toxins, but due to lack of studies, there's very little known about the venom. They were previously thought to be less venomous than other arteri species, but due to a few uh, more recently documented bites, that's actually been proved false. They've documented that in certain bites, uh, there's extreme hemorrhaging of internal organs and internal bleeding, as well as some neurotoxic um, effects. So this is really not a nice snake to get bitten by. Uh, considering there's no anti-venom, you would need to seek medical attention urgently. 
Now another interesting fact about certain snakes, occurs of quite a lot in certain species, is venom can vary from location to location depending on locality, depending on altitude, depending on prey items, etc. So a bite from this specific snake could be very different to the hairy bush viper that we found further east in Uganda. Now a very interesting thing as well is you can see the coloration and uh, they vary from like lime green color to a little bit more creamy and brown with these little black flecks on the top. Now as you can see the tail is quite differently colored than the rest of the snake and I'm taking a shot in the dark here but potentially they could use it for caudal luring which would mean that they would waggle their tail in front of the strike zone, wait for a prey item to enter and then they would whack it and then eat them down. So it's a beautiful little species of snake. They're very unique looking, which is one of the reasons there's a high demand for them in the pet trade. Now, these snakes don't live well at all in captivity, if at all. I haven't heard of any reports of these being bred in captivity. So if you do see these in snake shops or as a reptile expo, there's almost 100% chance it will be wild caught. So please, if you do see these snakes in pet shops or in any um, if anyone is selling these snakes, please don't buy them. It's a very big chance that they are wild caught, they will be filled with parasites. They are so habitat specific as well as prey specific that the chances are you will not be able to feed it, keep it happy and it will die after a couple of months. So if you do want to see these snakes, come out here to Uganda. There's guys who can show you the way, can track you through these beautiful jungles and you can come and witness and see these snakes in their natural habitat. It's far more beneficial for the snakes and then we can change the ideals out here because the, the people out here, um, they have permits for collecting snakes for the exotic trade. It's fully legal, but imagine we could change that trade from having snake hunters to snake guides. And you would come through to Uganda and actually have a snaking or a herping trip and come and see the multiple species of snakes that they have out here. There's some really unique species. It's an amazing environment. The people are super friendly. It would benefit the snakes, the environment, the trees as well as the people. You know, you can't blame these guys out here. They're trying to make a living. If we can give these guys another alternative to make income, I'm pretty sure they would take it with both hands. Can you imagine how beautiful it would be to have a forest full of these beautiful vipers in protected areas? So that being said, it's been an amazing experience to be able to catch and find one of these snakes in its natural environment. It's a really unique snake. The bristle or rough scaled bush viper, Arteris hispida. Thank you at Living Zoology for bringing me out here and being part of this beautiful expedition. Uh, many more to come, so please do follow at Living Zoology. They do amazing work. As you can see, finding these guys in the wild is no easy task, uh, and we've done it. If you've liked this video, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, please stay tuned for the next species of snake we catch out here in Uganda. <music>